Today we're at a place called Sunken Lane, just outside of Beaumont Hamel, where the two sides, British and German, faced off on the first day of the Battle of the Somme. The German front line came down from Serre, where we were in the previous video that I did about Horace Isles, and came down past the front here of Beaumont Hamel and then bulged out up here at Hawthorne Ridge. Up there, the German 119th Infantry Regiment had been set up for about 18 months. They were well dug in, strong defences. Across the other side of no man's land, the British 29th Division. So to just get your bearings a little bit here, kind of over sort of where this tree line is behind me. This is roughly where the German front line would have been. It would have come up here and you can see those trees up at the top of the hill up here. This is Hawthorne Ridge, which we're going to talk about in just a minute. That's where the German front line would have been. Over here, kind of where these trees are in the background behind me over here, this is where the British front line would have been and it would have run across kind of over behind us in a second. We're going to go check that out in just a minute. In between the two, right here, we have Sunken Lane. So this is Sunken Lane right here behind me and we're going to talk about Sunken Lane in just a minute as well. Now the gap that the British troops had to cross here on the first day of the Battle of the Somme was quite wide. You might remember in our video at Serre how close together those two lines were. Well here they're much further apart. So there was a strategic decision made by the British to try and take advantage of Sunken Lane. The plan would be to advance men forwards from the British front line into no man's land, into this little kind of valley here created by Sunken Lane that they could use so then the gap between there and the German front line was shorter for them to cross when the attack happened. Now another key strategy for the British on the first day of the Somme was to detonate mines along the German line. The idea of that would be to kind of weaken defences, take out strongholds where machine gunners were and things like that and make it much easier, much less well defended for the British to cross. Here outside Beaumont Hamel, the 252nd Tunnelling Company of the Royal Engineers had dug a tunnel more than half a mile long, 60 foot underground, across and underneath the German front line. And that mine was going to be just at the top of the ridge here. So where those trees are, that's where the mine was. And it was packed with 40,000 pounds of explosives. The British general overseeing the attack here, a general by the name of Sir Almir Hunter Weston, he wanted the mine to be set off um, quite a bit before the British attack and he requested for it to be set off four hours before the attack. That request was denied because all mines were to be set off just before the British attack. The plan would be literally a couple of minutes before the attack, the mines would go off and then the British could attack across no man's land. In the end, the Hawthorne Ridge mine here was set off to go 10 minutes before the British would attack. Now that was going to be a few minutes before other mines along this line were to blow. And that decision, creating just that gap in between the explosion and the British attack, would actually prove to be deadly. And we're going to talk about that in just a little while as well. Now one of the unique things about the attack here uh, is that it was filmed. The mine explosion at Hawthorne Ridge was filmed. There was some action here in Sunken Lane that was filmed as well. A British cinematographer by the name of Geoffrey Mayland was here and filmed those things happen on the first day of the song. During the early hours of the morning on the 1st of July, men of the 1st Battalion Lancashire Fusiliers moved forwards from their front line into Sunken Lane, where we are right now. This is roughly the midway point, maybe not quite the midway, midway point, but roughly between where the British front line was and the German front lines behind me over here at Beaumont Ham. And when the attack started, their job would be to move from here forwards and take the village of Beaumont Hamel itself. Now there is some famous footage where Geoffrey Mayland came forward and joined those men here in Sunken Lane. This footage was filmed at about 6.30 in the morning, about an hour prior to the attack. Just over an hour later, a lot of the men filmed in that footage would be dead.
Mayland then moved further back in order that he could film the explosion of the mine being detonated. We're going to go head over there right now. Now I've come further back now to not quite to where the British front line would have been. It would have been slightly further back from where I am, but, but nearly to where it would have been. And somewhere around here, or at least in this area, is where Geoffrey Mayland would have filmed that famous footage of the mine exploding. That would have been just where these trees are up here. Those trees are actually now growing in the crater that has been left by that mine. And we're gonna go check that out in just one minute. The mine was blown at 7.20 a.m. and men of the 2nd Battalion left their trenches over here, advancing across no man's land to take the ridge. So the mine blew and make no mistake, it had some effect. You can see behind me here, the crater. And look how enormous this is. Now I don't know if the camera is quite picking up how big it is, but to give you an idea, I mean, we're talking at least 30, 40 feet deep here, I would say, and huge, 200 yards across maybe. Now the problem was this mine blew at 7.20. The British were going to attack. The men of the second battalion would attack from their trenches over there across no man's land to take this area. But that 10 minutes proved fatal because whilst a lot of the Germans here were killed, not all of them were and it enabled men who had survived here and men from the reserve trench behind to move forwards and take the crest of this crater here and repel the attack from the second battalion ultimately despite valiant efforts here the attack was quickly repelled and by 7 30 only 10 minutes later the germans were able to be setting up machine guns here along this ridge now that would prove fatal because what you can see from here is the view that the German soldiers here would have had across no man's land, sunken lane, no man's land, and then the German front line over there. It would only be a minute or two before the men of the Lancashire Fusiliers left sunken lane to advance across this open space over the watchful eye of the German machine gunners right here. At 7.30 a.m. the 1st Battalion Lancashire Fusiliers emerged from Sunken Lane advancing towards Beaumont Hamill. Now the unique thing about Sunken Lane is that you can probably more than a lot of other places on the Somme you can literally understand what these men went through. So we're here in Sunken Lane they would have to advance forwards out of the lane out here into no man's land. Now of course no man's land itself would have looked very different. It certainly wouldn't have had this much grass around. But here we are out into no man's land advancing towards Beaumont Hamill. Now the problem here you can see because of the failure to be able to take the ridge where the crater had blown. Not only did the British troops advancing from here face enemy fire from the German trenches to the right. You can also see up there on the ridge they were facing German fire from there as well so they had machine gun fire from the side and also from the front ahead of us. The men here were just getting cut down and those who hadn't been killed had to start retreating back into sunken lane which at this stage was becoming full of dead and wounded men. By lunchtime here, the fight over just this short piece of ground uh, was com complete. It had been completely repelled with the British retreating back to their own front line. The Lancashire Fusiliers had lost 163 men with a further 312 wounded. And this stretch of the Somme was another example of just absolute failure, absolute tragedy. Despite the, the bravery of these men to advance across this open ground with machine gun fire ahead of them, machine gun fire to the right, they weren't successful. And it's another example of the tragedy here on the first day of the Somme.